Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you what's new in GIMP 2.10.34. Real quick before I get started, don't forget to check out my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. Alright, so let's dive right in here. There have been some new features that have been backported from the latest development release version of GIMP. That basically means that the current version of GIMP they're working on that will become GIMP 3.0 had some features that they were able to introduce into the GIMP 2.10 update versions. So basically we don't have to wait for GIMP 3.0 to come out to get these new features. That being said, they are very minor features. Once again, the last three release versions have been pretty light, but that is because about 84% of the developer manpower is going towards GIMP 3.0 at the moment. That's according to GIMP's 2022 annual report. So the first new feature found in this latest release version has to do with PDFs, importing or exporting PDFs. So I'm just going to demonstrate this real quick by opening up my file explorer, right click on a PDF, go to open with and choose GIMP. So here is the import PDF dialog and the new feature here is that we now have this option to fill transparent areas with white. The reason this feature is important is that software that create PDFs often automatically give PDF documents a transparent background and so that confuses GIMP because GIMP is a photo editor or photo manipulation software and it works with many file types including those that have transparency. So when GIMP sees transparency in a document, it thinks it wants transparency. Well, with PDFs, these documents are relying on the software opening the PDF to automatically fill the background behind the text so that you get this white page. I would assume it does that because different PDF readers probably have different backgrounds they want to place behind the text. But anyway, all that is to say that GIMP now supports automatically filling in transparency on PDFs with white. So if you've been having trouble reading your PDFs in GIMP, this should help that. And it's going to come checked by default. If you uncheck it, it will automatically remove the white background. In this case, the actual design has a white background, so nothing's happening here. But in many cases, you'll probably see everything behind your text turn transparency. So this also applies when you're exporting PDFs. You'll have a similar checkbox that you can check when you hit export, and that will ensure that your PDF documents will have a white background. So I'm just gonna hit cancel to exit out of that. The second new feature I'll cover is that you can now adjust the canvas size for your compositions using templates. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to image, canvas size, you now have this template dropdown option that just allows you to very quickly select a template from here. For example, let's of course go with the toilet paper roll option. So now you can place your photo on a toilet paper roll, wipe your ass with it, I don't care. And GIMP is just gonna automatically resize the canvas to that size. I can hit center for example, it'll center that up. So of course there are plenty of other options here. You can go with a floppy label. I think GIMP maybe needs to update some of these but you've got the 1920 by 1080 option there. So that will automatically adjust your canvas size. So it's just a nice little convenient option for adjusting the size of your composition. So let's stick with the toilet paper. I'm gonna need some of that later. Click resize. So now the canvas is resized. I'm just gonna hit Control Z to back up. The next new feature is a minor UI update, and that is that over here inside the layers panel and the paths panel, you're going to have these little icons at the top of the columns. These are just indicating that you do have options here to show or hide your layer, as well as link your layers. Same with paths, you can show or hide paths, or you can link your paths. So this just makes it easy for people to understand, hey, there is an icon here, even when you can't see it so that way you can toggle that on or off. There's also been some minor updates made to the color picker tool and the colors dialog. So let's come over here and just open up the colors dialog. So you do have your color picker right here. And the main update they've made to this is that when you have this color picker tool, you can pick from any color on your desktop screen right now. And if you have multiple screens, 
GIMP used to have a problem, I guess, with properly mapping out the coordinates to both screens, especially if the screens had different pixel dimensions or resolutions. So now GIMP does a better job of working with both of those screens, which just makes for more accurate color picking. And I'm just gonna pick a random color here. So the other update that was made here is that whenever you select a color scale and model, which is gonna be these tabs here, so either the zero to 100 or zero to 255, GIMP is going to save that setting when you click OK. So let's click OK and reopen up that dialog. So you'll see now it's going to automatically be on whatever you selected last. That way you don't always have to open this up and change it back or you know you might be working on something and forget that you had it in the wrong mode, then you gotta go back and switch it back. So that's just a convenience factor there. I'll click OK. If I double click to open that, you'll see it is still on that zero to 100. The last new feature I'll mention actually has to do with Mac versions, and that is that you can now open the help documentation inside of GIMP. That feature had been broken for a very long time, but GIMP has now fixed the HTTPS protocol or something of that nature, not a developer. But that means you should be able to now access the help documents from the web while you're inside of GIMP using the help browser. And you can get there by going to help and clicking help here. So here you'll see we have the GIMP help browser. This should now work on Mac. And that is a little slow to load, by the way. I'm just gonna exit out of there. So I'm gonna sign off with this video by saying that GIMP's development has been very slow the last few years. Nobody has noticed that more than me, but there does appear to be hope on the horizon. It appears that they are putting much more manpower into GIMP 3.0. They've made tons of progress. They've knocked out all the boring core stuff they needed to get done in order to get GIMP 3.0 up and running. It appears from what I've been seeing that GIMP 3.0 is probably going to come out in 2023, but it will not be the next version to come out. GIMP did mention that they are probably gonna have one or two more stable release versions before GIMP 3.0 comes out. So if it does manage to come out this year, it likely won't be till the end of the year. I think once GIMP 3.0 is finally released, there's gonna be a lot more people jumping in on the project and helping to develop it once again. And then GIMP can finally get back going because it has been so stagnant for so long, but it just needs to get over this hump and then I think the momentum will be back on GIMP's side and we'll once again see some great progress coming out of this free photo editor and photo manipulation software. All right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass on Udemy. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.